<laughs> Hello and welcome to the 72 show, a brand new show on YouTube brought to you by the 72. And as ever, I'm joined by our infamous and often controversial Twitter admin, Adam Reek. How are we doing? Doing all right, yourself? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, excited to talk about the EFL and what's happened over the last few days. Um, it's been another busy one, but perhaps let's talk about something uh, that a few people are talking about over the weekend, and that is Cardiff City fans at Ashton Gate over the weekend. So Cardiff travelled to Ashton Gate in the seven-side derby. They lost the game 3-2. But what everyone's talking about is what happened in the toilets at Ashton Gate. Blues smashed the blue at Ashton Gate. So what, what are we thinking about this? I can't work out who's more stupid. The fans smashing up the toilets or the Cardiff City fan grasping his mates up. Like, what are you doing? Why would you record your own fans and put it on social media? This mate, it's, it's bizarre. I mean, they're doing it for the uh, for the Snapchats, obviously. But, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what was that League One game um, towards the I end of last year? Right? Uh, well, actually, earlier this it was this season, I think, um, Accrington Stanley and Fleetwood, and um, Fleetwood's owner's son went on Twitter and was just arguing with Accrington Stanley's Twitter, uh, uh, Accrington Stanley's owner over on Twitter, and um, was just going head to head kind of thing, and just remind me of this, but you know, like just idiots, what are you doing? Like, I don't, I don't understand the the process of just going to a ground, uh, a ground and just smashing it up. Just going down at half time, have a pint with your mates and sing fucking, sing football chants. Um, I just saw that. You might have to edit that out. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just bizarre behaviour, isn't it? Um, I, I don't know whether you can relate it to Cardiff struggling in the league. You know, the twentieth, um, in the table, it's been a tough time for them since relegation from the Premier League. Uh, a few seasons ago, maybe you could say the Cardiff fans are just a bit frustrated with what's going on and they're taking their frustration out on the um, the ceiling in the Ashton Gate <laughs> toilets, which, you know, is, is just a bit childish, isn't it? If you look at the video as well, I mean, there's obviously a few kids in there, but there's a few grown men in yeah, there ripping, right. rip, ripping the ceiling down. Like the, I'm sure these guys have jobs. I'm sure they work hard and then they go and do that on the weekend. It's just... It's, it's, it's caveman behaviour, isn't it? It's just yeah, a bit silly, to be honest. But, um, they'll all be boozed up. They'll went to the pub before and to Derby, whatever Derby it is, like the, the bridge Derby or something. It's the seven, seven bridge Derby, Derby or something. Derby, um, and they've just gone on like idiots, to be fair. Like I say, like, it's just, <clears throat> it's the type of thing you'd see in the 90s and stuff. It's just pathetic. Like, mm -hmm. I, in fact, would they even do that in the 90s? They'd just scrap with each other. They wouldn't start just punching some plastic sealant. Like what? What they're achieving, and then, like I say, the, the person videoing them. <clears throat> it's easy for the police to just see, um, pick out people there, and they'll probably be getting a knock at the door. Yeah, yeah, rightly so. They should be fined, um, or, or at least the club should be made to pay for the damages. And then, you know what? Yeah, that's uh, what we're asking. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, moving on, another talk. Another talking point from the past week has been the future of Fulham midfielder Fabio Carvalho. Now, he's been linked with the Premier League move all season, but recently Liverpool, West Ham and Leeds are being strongly linked with the midfielder, as well as German clubs Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Leverkusen. Uh, he's out of contract in the summer, but Fulham aren't giving up on getting a renewal in place. Um, he, he's obviously a, a crazy talent and he's a quality footballer. Mm. But what do you think... Um, Put, putting the contract aside, what do you think Fabio Carvalho should be doing right now? Um, I think there's there's four names that I've got who we should probably be looking at the careers of, and that's Patrick Roberts, Harvey Elliott, Moussa Dembele and Ryan Sessegnon. Four young lads who have carved their career through by beginning, by beginning, beginning at Fulham. And I think... Patrick Roberts is probably one of the best examples because it's the same position. Now, he went to Man City and he's been to about 35 different clubs on loan since and he just can't get 
that solid game time, which I think Fabio Caballo isn't like will get now, like is getting a fun and will get in the Premier League. But then you've got other names, such as, like I say, Harvey Elliott, Moose Elliott. They have left Fulham and they are playing at a higher level. I don't know. It's, it's probably just one for him. Obviously, you can't just look at those situations. Like, every football is different. It's just because you came through the same club. It doesn't it just doesn't mean you're going to have the same career as, that, uh, career as them. But I think if I'm him, I'm probably... I mean, you're going to be in the Premier League next season, aren't they? The problem is, if they go up, and he does have 38 games in the Premier League, and he doesn't set the um, set the league on fire, then his market value is going to drop. And will he then get the, the chance to get a move again? I'd probably go. Uh, if I'm him, I'm probably I'm probably saying go go to go to the Leeds, go to the West Ham. Um, yeah, I mean it's such a difficult position for a young footballer to be in. You know, he's only 19 years old and when you were 19 years old, you weren't thinking about doing anything else other than what you like doing. Um, mm. For Fabio Cavalier, that's playing football and playing it well. Um, eight goals and two assists in 17 championship items this season. So there's no denying um, the guy's talent, but he's put he's put Fulham in such a difficult position, rejecting that contract earlier in the season. Now, Fulham, it, it would be criminal if they lost Fabio uh, for free in the summer. But like you said, if he goes to a big club and he doesn't perform well, or he doesn't perform well in the Prem with Fulham next season, then that'll greatly affect his transfer value. Mm. So for Fabio Carvalho, I think looking at those linked clubs, I'd like to see him go to Liverpool. I think Liverpool uh, would really suit the way he plays. You know, he, Liverpool have got those the front three and that midfield three. Mm. Carvalho could fit in either, either slot of those. And in the long term, you're probably mm. looking at a replacement for Roberto Firmino. I think they're two very mm. similar players. Mm. Um, will Fabio Cavallio move in the final days of this transfer window? It won't be surprising. I think, what is there, a few days left now. I think if he was going to, there would be something more concrete in place now. But, I mean, how, how many times have we seen a move come up on deadline day? First we've heard of it and then it goes through you mm. know, before the deadline hour so. I won't be surprised if he moves on, but if if you were to pick one club for Fabio Carvalho to move to, Liverpool, West Ham, Leeds, Chelsea have also been linked. Um, Real Madrid and Barca have been linked early in the season, and then Dortmund and Leverkusen. Um, where, where do you, where do you think Fabio Carvalho could have a good future? He's a busy footballer. He's very busy, um, which is why my first thought is Leeds United, especially if Rafinha ends up going. He could be that. Rafinha type player, you know, carry them through games, be the maverick for them. Um, but then West Ham, I mean, you've seen Ben Rama go in there, you've seen Jared Bowen go in there, both uh, championship players. So it makes sense for him to go there. I think he's lucky, he's lucky because, like you say, he's got the option to continue with Fulham and be Premier League football next season, or he's got the option to let his contract run down. Uh, to be fair, if he's a free transfer, more clubs will be, maybe he might come out the woodwork and, you know, we'll punt on him. He'll get a nice sign-on fee as well. It's full of who I feel sorry for in this. It's it's never nice for a club who's bought a player through to then lose him on a free. So, Fulham fans will hit, obviously hate us for saying that he should probably look elsewhere to continue uh, to, you know, move on his career, but it's football. We've all lost players for free. We've all lost players for who we want to keep. It's just the ever, uh, never-ending cycle of transfers, isn't it? Yeah, um, especially, especially with young football, it's a breakout <clears throat> in the way that Fabio does because it, it just puts them in the shop window straight away, doesn't it? Everyone wants to buy these young players. I mean, you look at uh, Millwall, Zach Lovelace, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he mm -hmm. um, 16 years old, 15 years old when he was named on the bench uh, for Millwall at the back end of last year. He's played what? A handful of minutes for championship football for Millwall and now all these teams like um I think Arsenal have been linked to him, um Southampton maybe. So yeah, it's it's a difficult, difficult um kind of world for young footballers. But um another young footballer, Daryl DK, has been ruled out until March with a hamstring injury. Um uh, West Brom seven mil signing this month from Orlando City, reuniting with Valerian Ismail after his impressive loan spell at Barnsley last season. Um, for me, West Brom season's over. I, I can't see them recovering um, from this. Uh, 
fourth place in the table. They've not been in the greatest of form. They don't have a plan B under Ismail. Um, I think he showed that at Barnsley last season. And seeing how poorly Barnsley have done this uh, this season, I think it only makes last season showing just even more of an anomaly. So um, DK out for a few months. The Baggies want a loan replacement in the final few days of the window. Um, what, what do you make of this? Do you think West Brom have a chance of automatic promotion still? Well, this is what I was going to ask. When you say West Brom season's over, do you mean for automatics or do you just not even uh, think... Um, to, or, to be honest, I, th I think they're in a battle for sixth. I think they're in a battle for sixth now. I think there's more teams that will come good in the second half of the season, like Middlesbrough, Forest, Sheffield United, maybe. Um, Middlesbrough win the playoffs for me, I think. Millsboro or Blackburn. So, Middlesbrough. do you know what I agree with you? I don't think West Brom... I don't think they'll go up this season, and especially now that they lost DK. I mean, Colin Grant, <clears throat> Callum Robinson, those players should both be hitting 15 goals minimum in the season. And John Hugo, awful. So, if then who do they bring in on loan? Dwight Gale, well, maybe? That, that's the thing. Um, Dwight Gale obviously had that. Crazy season with West Brom a few seasons ago where he scored, what, uh, 25 to 30 goals. Um, I'm surprised he's not got a move yet because I think he's one of the, he's proved himself to be one of the most prolific championship strikers out there. But, I mean, what, what, what did West Brom do now? Like, they, they had their sights on DK, they got him, spent probably all of their January budget on a player who's now out for the next few weeks, so... Whether that's a bad judgment call because he played a lot of football with Orlando in the season just gone, and then he's obviously coming into the championship, which is much more intense, much more physical. Were they hoping that he'd hit the ground running? Um, if so, that might have been a poor judgment call, but it's mm. definitely a blow for West Brom, who are now fifth in the championship table, 45 points, seven points behind Blackburn in second, and Middlesbrough sitting seventh for just one win away from West Brom. So... Looking at the championship table, um, I think there's definitely a battle on for sixth where Huddersfield Town currently sit. Credit to them because I thought they'd drop off a lot sooner, um, but they've they've kept their kept their uh, promotion hopes alive. Um, so Mid Middlesbrough is your call for sixth spot or promotion? Yeah. So. Unless unless West Brom can do something, and I don't mean get a striker. I mean get rid of Ishmael. He was never the right man for the club anyway. Like Ishmael was brilliant at Barnsley because he had average players overperforming and they had a system that worked. They were the underdog week in, week out. You know, Stars and Britain on the wing back roles, Woodrow, Dyke, uh, Alex Mowitz, you know, the Helic at the back. It was it was all perfect for him. And he's went into West Brom and West Brom should be up there with Fulham and Bournemouth. You know, they should be running away with it. But the problem that he's got is he needs to take the game to the opposition. And that's not what Ishmael is about. If I'm West Brom's owners and board members, I'm probably I'm, I'm getting I'm getting rid of Ishmael now. There's still 20 games or so left of the season. And I'm looking elsewhere. Do you know what it is? <clears throat> Get Slam and Billich on the on the phone. <laughs> Give him a bell, see if he'll come back. I'm sure West Brom fans would love that. I mean, yeah, he's obviously doing better than where than what Ismail's doing, but um you forget Ismail wasn't West Brom's first choice in the summer. They wanted Chris Wilder. Mm -hmm. And now obviously he's flying with Middlesbrough. West Brom really missed out on Wilder there. I think he would have made them into top two contenders definitely, because the way Wilder plays compared to Ismail. Wilder, Wilder can adapt to games. He's yeah, got more chalk and cheese. Than, yeah, he's got he's got more than a plan A. I think he's such a underrated manager in the term in terms of how he plays football, um, how he galvanizes. You know, what what were half decent players at Sheffield United? He took them up into the Premier League and um, almost qualified for Europa League in their first season. So Wilder for me, yeah, would have been a great fit at West Brom, but. Let's look ahead uh, to some fixtures in the EFL this week. Championship football in action tonight. Uh, big game at the bottom of the table, Birmingham versus Peterborough. Uh, Nottingham Forest at home to Barnsley. QPR at home, Swansea City on Sky Sports Football. Any standout games there for you? Um, I think the Nottingham Forest one will be a good one. Obviously, they need to win and Barnsley are awful. So, 
it would be good to see if there can be a few goals in that game, to be fair. Barnsley are dreadful this season. Um, I fully expect them to go down. I expect them to finish bottom as well, finishing below a team that had 21, 21 points deducted in Derby County. It's pretty shameful, yeah. to be honest. Um, moving on to League One, uh, a hand, handful of fixtures tonight, AFC Wimbledon, Ipswich Town, and then Burton, MK Dons, Fleetwood, Plymouth, Gilligan, at home to Shrewsbury. But at the weekend, there's a few big games. Uh, your team, Sunderland, travelled to Bolton. How do you see that one going? Hopefully we win. <laughs> I'll be in the away end. I think we're taking 5,300. Um, nothing, nothing new there. So hopefully we can get three points. And um, it, Well, we need to win because if we win our next two games, we'll be on a points per game of two. And I always say, if you get points per game of two and you get 92 points in League One, you'll go up. Simple as that. It doesn't matter what Wigan's doing. doesn't matter what Wotham's doing. doesn't matter what Wickham's doing. If we keep going at two <clears> points per game, other sides will drop off. Um, so, like I say, if we win, if we beat Bolton, then I think we've got Doncaster. That's that should be a free win. We go on sixty points from thirty games, and I think we'll go up second, probably behind Wigan. I mean, it's easier said than done, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you know that better than anyone after four seasons in League One. Um, anyway, top top three in League One: Sunderland, Wigan, Rotherham, all away at the weekend. Oh. Wigan tra travel to Cheltenham. Rotherham to Crew Alexandra. Um, in League Two, there's a huge game at the top of the League Two table uh, this weekend. Bear with me. Uh, Tranmere Rovers at home to Forest Green, second against first. Um, Le League Two is not a league we always talk about, but we should give it uh, some more attention as we are the 72. Mm -hmm. um, have you paid much attention to Forest Green this season? I think there's seven points clear at the top of the table, ahead of Rotherham with a game yeah. in hand. Well, yeah, so they're, they're on my bets for the league champions of League Two. I've got a little hack of that. I've got a treble of Salah, top goal scorer in the Prem, Sunland champions, Forest Green champions. And I think it's going, I think um, Forest, Forest Green is certainly going to do their part. I remember early on in the season, um, I think the big Crawley Town and John Yems said in his interview, they're the best team in League Two by far. And uh, you'll see that come the end of the season. And it's been proven right. <clears throat> just they're just they're just I don't know they're just perfect for that division like they've got everything about them so and like you say Tramir Tramir who's at home Tramir off our screen uh, Tramir at home so Tramir Tramir's home form as of late has been superb so it could be a good game and then obviously yeah. you'll have Northampton Sutton they're uh, looking at that results chasing behind the pack um, even Mansfield Mansfield's they've got an easy yeah. game this week they're at home to late in orient this week orient so that'll be another three points for them it's it's going to be interesting as league two progresses i think false green will win the league i think they, they'll then be like Tramia, northampton Sutton, like i say fighting for them two spots and then mansfield might come up behind them and sneak in into the <clears throat> yes um it's really open in league two nigel clough at mansfield uh turn their season around they're chasing promotion now after a pretty poor start mm -hmm. um but as ever if you've watch this video you've liked it um drop us a like subscribe and leave your comments uh, in the comment section if you want to add anything onto that and uh join us next week for another episode of the 72 show